episode 1.3 begins now. Okay, today's question from the internet is, printer though, we've been discussing the idea that if UFOs are real, that they might run on an air plasma buoyancy effect to float. The byproduct of plasma is light, which would explain why UFOs have associated light. Does this buoyancy effect sound reasonable? And that's from Name Withheld. So if you turn air into a plasma, it would have a lower density than the surrounding air. So this is due to the heat of the plasma, as well as the repulsion between the ionized particles. The lower density of the air plasma should have a buoyancy effect and want to float upwards. Uh, we know this is the case because if you have electrical discharges where you have um, an air plasma, these electrical discharges tend to want to travel upwards if possible. The best way to demonstrate this buoyancy is with what's known as a Jacob's Ladder. The Jacob's letter I'm assembling here is based on a timer IC and a power transistor and this drives pulsed input into an automotive ignition coil. The output is around 40 to 60,000 volts. Anyway, when you run the Jacob's letter, what you see is that the arc moves upwards from buoyancy until it reaches a point where the voltage isn't enough to cross the gap distance. And then it starts again from the bottom. So could that buoyancy effect be actually used to lift something useful? The first problem is that the plasma is not solid and therefore it's not able to transfer lift to the object that's generating it. To demonstrate this we can put the Jacobs ladder electrodes on a finely balanced ruler and when we switch it on we can see that the balance isn't disturbed. In theory you could confine the plasma using a large vessel or magnets but the weight of such items would probably destroy any negligible buoyancy effect. If we chuck magnets on both ends of the balanced ruler, we can still see that there's no disturbance when the uh, air plasma is generated. The second problem is the amount of energy you need to get buoyancy. Let's do a theoretical calculation for the buoyancy of the air plasma we have in this video. To do this, we can roughly work out the volume of the air plasma electrical arc. So it's roughly one millimeter in diameter and five centimeters long. So to work out the rough volume of the air plasma, we can use the formula for volume of a cylinder. So that's uh, volume equals pi radius squared uh, multiplied by height or length. So once you go through all the calculations, you end up with roughly 40 uh, cubic millimeters. What's happening with buoyancy is that you're displacing the mass of the existing air. When you have a cubic meter of air at sea level, you have around 1.29 kilograms of air mass. If you were to have a perfect vacuum and take that uh, cubic meter of air mass away, you would then have 1.29 kilograms of lifting power. Therefore, the 1.29 kilograms is the theoretical maximum lifting power for one cubic meter. The plasma we have here isn't in cubic meters, but cubic millimeters. So therefore we need to divide by 1 billion to obtain cubic millimetres. For consistency we also divide the 1.29 kilograms by 1 billion and this gives you 1.29 micrograms of lift per cubic millimetre. In the first calculation there was an estimated 40 cubic millimetres of air plasma. So to work out the total lifting power of the air plasma we had, we multiply 40 by 1.29 and we end up with 50 micrograms of lift for the uh, experiment. And again, remember this is the theoretical maximum lifting power. Let's look at the power that's needed to generate the air plasma. The Jacobs ladder kit I used uses around 5.5 amps at 12 volts, so around 50 watts of energy. So roughly you're looking at one watt of energy per microgram of lift, assuming the theoretical maximum lift. Let's put this into a real vehicle. Say you wanted a DeLorean to fly. Now a DeLorean is 1,030 kilograms. To get that into micrograms, we multiply by 1 billion. So in total, the DeLorean is just over 1 trillion micrograms. If one watt of energy gets you one microgram of lift, then in the very best case scenario, you're looking at over a trillion watts to lift a single DeLorean. So that's a huge amount of energy. It's uh, 1,230 gigawatts, or should we say gigawatts, and uh, that's equal to you know the same amount of large power stations. 
So that's real power stations and not uh, alternative uh, green energy hippie ones. And again, remember this is the uh, theoretical maximum lifting power, and in reality a plasma isn't going to form a perfect vacuum. So it's probably around two to three times this amount of energy that you actually need. So in conclusion, in theory, an air plasma could be used to provide buoyant lift to vehicles. However, it's simply not viable without access to unimaginable lightweight power sources. And that's totally without considering things like plasma confinement and heat management. Furthermore, if you have um, buoyant lift, it will only get you as far as the, uh, the top of the atmosphere and uh, it won't get you any further. Yeah.